Smart technology movement uh, has some very interesting implications for the learning technology field and for learning technologists. Uh, I think that it uh, has much potential as these children are in engaged with building, creating, and making things with technology. Uh, we see a lot of this movement happening in uh, all across the world, uh, certainly in the United States here as well as here in Spain. And what I find so intriguing about this movement is that it puts the materials in the children's hands, whereas they, we go into a future where they literally can construct anything their imagination can think of. Uh, this opens up amazing spaces for, uh, for our thinking about what education is and how to enculturate creative uh, cre creative individuals. So the, uh, the robotics industry, the new 3D manufacturing, um, as well as kind of the smart technology movement coming together <laughs> as educational technologists, we need to be engaged in this. We need to think about the spaces of encouraging creativity and engagement like you see here uh, that naturally happens and leverage that for our educational system. Uh, because I believe we're all designers. These children are designers. Uh, teachers are designers. University faculty are designers. We're all designing technology learning experiences. And so to be able to bring these movements together, I think there's some exciting spaces in there for, for us to, to think in new ways uh, about this technology and about what we can do with it to connect it to both formal and informal learning. So uh, as we go forward, uh, uh, the, the uh, sensor-based technology also offers some very interesting uh, intersections for education. Right now, there are some models of um, uh, smart homes, such as the Nest technology, which is a uh, temperature monitoring system for your home, which learns your patterns uh, and then is able to adjust and adapt. There are things that are uh, emerging, such as the fitness bands that track uh, physiological input and then feed, feed it back to you to tell you about your level of fitness and uh, tracking your patterns and your physical movements uh, based on the sensor technology that, that reside in it. Uh, MIT, for example, is coming out with uh, vest-based uh, experiences that enhance reading with electronic books that light up or vibrate or uh, turn, uh, give you a hot and cold sensation based on the part of the book that you are reading. Um, so uh, these are very interesting and engaging experiences that we need to learn to design um, and, and kind of engage with as, as learning technologists. Uh, the, um, the iPhone watch is coming out, we're told, in September uh, from Apple, and it will have um, 10 sensor systems inside it. Right now your iPhone has about six. It will have several more. Uh, it's unknown right now what, what those will do. We're, we're told it may be more health oriented, but I often wonder what could we learn uh, with collecting data about engagement, new behavioral data about how children are engaged in the learning process, whether that's physiological or that is through perhaps Google Glass could uh, incorporate some eye tracking capability. We could learn so much about teaching and learning, about the level of engagement, about perception and attention and where children are attending to and then what we could do with that information to better engineer or better design learning experiences.